Welcome back to AM Northwest. From B.O. to Belcher's sneezes and diseases, our next guest book is full of all sorts of disgusting information. That's why we wanted him here this morning. We're happy to welcome back to AM Northwest the author of The Big Book of Gross Stuff, Bart King. Thanks so much for having me. Nice to have you here. You know, you, you, you started with The Big Book of Boy Stuff, which I thought was The Big Book of Gross Stuff. <laughs> uh, right. No, we've expanded our you, Yeah, you, you've our refined horizons. it. But uh, a, a fun book. Uh, first off, who are you recommending the book for? Well, you know, I think it may have an appeal for immature adults, uh, yeah. but I specifically kind of wrote it to maybe the 9 to 14-year-old crowd. So it's, you know, gratuitous material. Uh, I inject some humor and some science and some uh, history into it. But, uh, yeah, probably 9 to 14-year-olds is and, most and likely. to prospect. that, we should remind folks, you you are, you were, you are, a, I don't know if you're ever not a, a long time teacher. middle school teacher. Yeah, I think right. it's like alcoholism. Isn't it? You're always going to be <laughs> a middle school teacher. It's always in your system, right. Uh, so, so it's factual. Factual, yeah, with a few flights of fancy. Okay. Disgusting fancy, but fancy okay. nonetheless. But yeah. how do you research a book on these kinds of things? Well, you know, there's uh, there's all sorts of studies that I went through for this, and I think Dave made mention of one about BO, which maybe we can return to in a second. I'm horribly sorry. Uh, but another, maybe one of the most fun avenues of research was interviewing people. For mm -hmm. example, you know, I, I love, love finding out about people's pet gross grossnesses, the right. things that gross you out that might be a little idiosyncratic compared to other people. And um, one group of people that I interviewed for the book, the book isn't about grisly and gruesome things, but I wanted to talk to people who have a high threshold for that, like ER doctors. Mm -hmm. And so um, I talked to probably half dozen ER doctors and I asked, you know, what are the kind of the garden variety things that, that gross you out or do they anymore? Because you see horrible things every day, you know, compound fractures, you name it. And it was fascinating to hear how, you know, things like, you know, one doctor was telling me how she gets absolute goosebumps even thinking about just kind of like not even a chive on someone's tooth, but uh, like that anonymous white stuff that sometimes gets stuck between people's teeth. And yeah. as she was talking about it, she had this physical <laughs> response. And I was like, my goodness. Wow. You, know, I mean, you see people brought in on gurneys yeah. and, yeah. and stuff in someone's thing. teeth. But, but can a little get powdery to. plaque throws them off. Yeah. Well, let, let's, let's go to B.O. Yeah. Men okay. Women. Yeah. Got so worth BO. You, you know, you posed the question earlier. Uh, when is your day gonna go downhill? I think you reached that moment. <laughs> uh, right. So they did. You know, there's this uh, charming um, research uh, group in Switzerland that did a study for, for two years trying to find the closest scent corollary to body odor, to human body odor. And what they found was that there's actually two different kinds of body odor, male and female. And uh, after two years, they concluded that men's BO smells like Gouda cheese, women's BO smells like onions. Uh, now, so it's, you know, which is better, there is no value judgment that I want to make here. I will say, though, that this ruins the idea of French onion soup for me forever. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Right. Between, the, <laughs> between the cheese and the onion. Okay, you talk about a disgust gene. Right, you know, so the things that disgust us are unsurprisingly kind of physical and mental. So the, the mental component would be sort of, um, you know, our psychology, the cultural upbringing that we've had. But the, there's also a visceral response we have to things that are disgusting sometimes uh -huh. um, that we recoil from maybe a decomposing dead you know, piece of roadkill or something. And that's a part of the gut brain, which is this incredible network of uh, neurons in your digestive system. And so, you know, maybe a good way to put this, like, do you still get nervous before the show? Like, before you come on as little sure. butterflies or something mm -hmm. like that? Um, that's your gut brain basically responding to the anxiety that your brain's having, or I don't know if anxiety is the right word, but um, in a more... Um, kind of a dramatic example, maybe, you know, you, you look at something and your gorge sort of rises and you don't want to, you know, you don't even want to, I don't know what this would be for you. Well, what are your pet grossnesses? Maybe we can get to this now. You know, do you have a particular thing that disgusts you beyond the usual? Yeah, I was going to say vomiting. Vomiting, yeah, vomiting's bad. <laughs> I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. You, yeah. uh, by the way, you, you, you uh, at the teacher and you tells us that if you're going to use fake vomit, add water. It makes it more realistic. It does. Yeah, it's just yes. those little tips that you could yeah. take home. <laughs> Every day. Now, I, uh, I drink a lot of water, right. and especially like w with anxiety. If I'm nervous, I drink water. Sure. My throat dries sure. out. But there are, there are places, you say in the book, where people actually drink cow urine. Well, they drink the human urine as well. And so, oh. you know, in our culture, we have this deep aversion to touching urine, much less drinking it. But really, urine is perfectly antiseptic. It's not dis I mean, poop is disgusting, but urine actually really isn't. I mean, saliva is rife with bacteria, and we swallow that all the time. Urine has no bacteria in it. Um, and so in India, it's been a custom for centuries, actually, to drink small amounts of urine for health purposes. Gandhi had a cup of urine every morning. Mahatma Gandhi. True. It, yeah, was, his, it was his own urine, yeah. I might add. Well, so. oh. 
Now, uh, yeah. in India, they are going to be marketing, apparently, later this year, a substance called, it's a pop, a soft drink called Gaujal, and that translates to cow water, because if you're going to drink urine, get it from the most auspicious source. In India, that would be a cow. I don't know how they harvest it. I do have my ideas. I, uh, I would hate to be a cow urine farmer. A cow, yes. Yeah. What is your occupation? Yeah, I don't want to do that. Cow urine farmer. Uh, boy, there's so much more. You say there's a, uh, there's a, there's a pressure point on your wrist that would actually, if you feel like you might vomit, it will stop it? Right, so if you have a barf impulse, now mm. might be that time. I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, where is that? Right, studies show that for a significant percentage of people, simply applying pressure to where the wristband of your watch might be can, I'm sure it's circuited. If you want to go double duty, you can get tight wristbands on both of them. And they usually have a ridge or a bead in them, they, or barf bracelets, I think they call them. Oh, sure, them. it's what women use when they're pregnant to, to fight, ward off warning sickness. And people who are going on, if you're uh, sea motion sickness, for example, mm. oftentimes they'll see these on like cruise ships or actually much smaller ships usually. But, right, well, yeah. the, the thing in the book that most grows you out. We're out of time, but um, spit wads. Hate them. Wet well, paper. There, Wet pieces of the paper. Can't there's take the it. teacher. The victim <laughs> this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the big book of gross stuff available in uh, all the normal places. Good to see you again. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks yeah, so